This is the It's My Time Podcast with Asher Chua. Who do you say you are? Wow. I like that. Um, so who do I say I am? I am a, uh, I would say I'm the number one kingdom entrepreneur strategist. Um, that I am a business development uh, blueprint strategist. So that, that's who I say that, that I am. Are you looking okay. for like a one statement or a summary? Because I got both. Both are good. I mean, the the uh, the more you can elaborate, the better. But I mean, I, I'll ask you a, a follow up question with it. So you you said you're the number one kingdom. One more time. Entrepreneur strategist. So what what does that mean for like? I'm I'm kind of I'm basic. So you you got to break it down for me. Absolutely. So what I do is I help entrepreneurs destroy the glass ceiling and accelerate in life. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of times I find that um, I have to not only give practical principles as far as business is concerned, uh, but sometimes I really have to minister to the spirits of my clients. Um, Mm -hmm. And they may may have a relationship with God and they may not, um, but being a kingdom entrepreneur strategist allows me to help them see um, basically like why they aren't succeeding on both ends meaning that if they come to me for something business Mm -hmm. then you know we we stay in that lane but once it starts to uh, become personal meaning like um i had a young lady that i was coaching this morning Mm -hmm. and i think that she might be islamic Mm -hmm. but she really just started talking about how uh she was tired of not being able to see her dreams come to fruition right Um, and she just started crying and so that gave me an opportunity to give her the spiritual side of why uh, things happen like that. So that that's why, uh, you know, I, I come in handy when it comes to helping people really learn how to get to the next level and destroy uh, levels as far as that glass ceiling is concerned, because so many people can only get so far. Mm-hmm. And then once they get to that certain point, a lot of times they don't realize why they got stuck. And gotcha. so that's what I help them. I help them uncover. I help them expose that. Okay. That's a good, that's a very good point. And one thing I I heard today, um, just talking with a group of guys on, on, um, the amends prayer line. Um, one of the guys really put something out there that I thought was great. And I don't know if you echo this or agree with this, but one thing he said that many people as they kind of find their way to like searching out their truth or when it comes to like spirituality um he kind of encourages people that maybe want to deviate from the norm where it's like okay like some people have it in their minds that they're like this is the truth the only truth and nothing but the truth but then other people are like i don't know but i'm gonna go find out and those people somewhat get like ostracized so I think it's in the same line, but seeing what you said about regardless of where your client was this morning, you were able to see that she was hurting and you were at least able to step into that, the spiritual realm and kind of like comfort her, if that makes sense. That's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. So how how long have you been doing that? So I've been in business development for over a decade. Okay. Uh, helping people apply kingdom principles. That's new. That kind of happened when I stepped into entrepreneurship about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what happened was I originally built a team of over 2000, uh, individuals. And I found out that you have to learn ways to motivate people. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you don't, then they'll get stuck. <laughs> yeah. They'll get stuck. Right. And they won't move. So I had to figure it out. And so what I found out was the easiest way to motivate people, it has to be a conglomerate, Mm -hmm. uh, which means that you have to be able to give them practical principles. Like this is how it should work. This is what you should expect. Mm -hmm. These are the goals that you should have. Um, But you also have to be able to minister to their spirit because a lot of times their reason why they want to accomplish something can also be the reason why they end up stopping doing what they want to accomplish. Uh, to give you a perfect perfect example of that, um, I have a lot of single moms who I mentor. 
And so, of course, what's their number one reason why they want to be successful as their kids, right? Yeah. Well, they also allow that to be their biggest reason why they're not able to accomplish those goals, whether it's not being able to get a babysitter, uh, maybe behavioral situations, um, maybe that, you know, they're getting into it with, with the other parent or whatever that is. And instead of internalizing that and understanding that this is a distraction mm -hmm. and until you feed your focus, right. And until you starve your distractions, you're going to continue to repeat the same exact thing over and over again. And so what I found out was when I'm helping individuals be able to accomplish from a business standpoint, I also have to understand that they're still people. So it can't always be business, 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 business. You know, it right. can't be take A to get the Z or, yeah. you know, that that's just not the way life works like that. And so when I realized that being able to help them both emotionally, spiritually in business, they mm -hmm. were able to be successful. And so I've helped um, to date, I think in the last 12 months, about 25 people who have been able to leave their jobs and go into full-time entrepreneurship. Mm, okay. And I definitely would account that uh, to one, the business strategies that I provide, but also the ability to also be able to encourage them in their spirit and understanding exactly what it is that they're going through. Mm. Can you, can you explain? Um, I know I, I try to do it. I, I try to do it earlier, but I don't think I did it justice. Since you've been in this industry, like in the business space and the entrepreneurial space more recently, can you explain what it means to like, like what someone's spirit is essentially? Well, it, it depends. I know that's a right? lot of questions. <laughs> it depends. I don't know who you've got watching, Ashley, but it depends or listening. Yeah. Um, so, so here's the thing. Um, Okay, let, let's, let's, let's break it down like this. So here's the thing. Uh, when it comes to the spirit, right, and it depends on who you have a relationship with, mm -hmm. because you have some people who have relationship with trees, right? Mm -hmm. They don't believe in God. And so they feel like the universe is what supplies. And so I do not hide, nor am I embarrassed about who I have a relationship and who I serve. Um, so it does not impede or impose upon who they serve. Mm -hmm. it, just give, it just gives them the ability to see from a divine revelation, oh, you know what? I never thought about it like that. And mm -hmm. the fact that you even came to me with that type of perception makes me open to want to hear more. So what just happened was, there was a seed sown in that, in their spirit, right? Of, okay. of wanting to know, how are you so happy? How are you so joyous? How is it that you can be having your own personal challenges, but it doesn't seem like it slows you down. And so that's when I'm able to really tell them, like from a spiritual standpoint, that's supernatural strength. That's mm. not something that you can handle on your own. Um, and, and I'll tell you just a little bit, of my personal testimony. So most people that follow me on social media have no clue that I had to put my son in rehab for the last 12 months, like in and out of rehab, mm -hmm. uh, that he was dealing with suicide, that he was dealing with uh, hard drug use. And I mean hard, probably every drug known uh, to man. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I put it, oh, so every drug known to, uh, every drug known to man. And so, um, going watching him i would say deteriorate mm -hmm. in front of my eyes and not being able to do anything uh not be able to force him to stop using drugs like that's the type of spiritual reinforcement that comes when you have a relationship with god because mm -hmm. if i if i didn't believe in god i would have like i would have gave up you know what i'm yeah. saying like there's no way i would have continued to help other people push their dreams and their goals when i'm watching my own seed not be able you know to enter in his so when you ask the question about uh what is a spirit or what what is spiritual i guess it goes back it is something that's very divine um, mm -hmm. And it takes a deep revelation to really understand because most people see the body and they think that that's it. Mm -hmm. Not realizing like it is your spirit that will allow you to accomplish things. Like I've seen, I've watched uh, war stories, documentaries where they've mm -hmm. been able to accomplish amazing things. Like 
getting shot or their leg being blown off and they crawl until they find help. That's yeah. the spirit right, that's on right. the inside of you that is telling you, hey, it doesn't matter what you see on the outside or in the natural. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that if you yeah. just stay committed, you can make it. So I think it's so many different definitions that, that we could go through. But I think uh, for the sake of the lane that I'm, I'm focused on, mm -hmm. I just believe that people need to understand that once your, your spirit is in alignment mm -hmm. with, you know, who it is that you want to be, you'll be able to, to get a lot further. Gotcha. That's a great, great response, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, I think one, one thing you made me think of when you, you spoke about your son was um, this analogy or, or kind of um, story that someone's told me recently. And they say that when you have um, deer and um, like everybody knows, at least in, in Georgia, um, deer are kind of like all over the place, yes. especially, especially during like the, um, the fall season and, and things like that. They go, it, it might be their mating season, but um, I didn't know this, but he, he mentioned that whenever a deer is shot or wounded, unless you track it down and make sure that it's dead, like it within its DNA, it understands that it has the ability to re repair itself. So like wow. if it's been, if it's been pierced or anything like that, it can go lay down um, in the mud or like get, get somewhere where it's muddy and they can basically patch that area and wow. like take the time to rest there and be able to kind of put themselves back together and kind of go on like nothing ever happened. And wow. that like the ability to do that just reminded me that like spirituality like you explained it and the way that I've seen it, it's, it's kind of like a piece of, of you. And yeah. until you realize like what it means for you and how you can tap into it, you're kind of, um, you're not utilizing all your, your abilities, so to say. So it's like right. it, the same thing can be said with like emotional intelligence, um, mental, um, your mental capacity, like being able to control and like manage your mental health, um, your physical health, your um, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. And I think another one that people throw in there, it's like financial, like that's, that's not something necessarily tied to you, but it, it does affect the life of most people because they say right. you, you can't, you can't really do much without money because air is the only thing you don't have to buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's, that's, um, yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that with me. I, I didn't, I didn't know, but I, I appreciate you trusting me with that. Absolutely. So are you, are you from Atlanta or, or where are you originally from? Yes, I'm from Atlanta. That's what's I'm up. I'm from Old National College Park. They call me the College Park Princess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I relocated to Houston, Texas uh, for about 12 years. Okay. Yeah, for about 12 years. And then you, you're staying in Houston or you, you've moved back to Atlanta? I'm actually in both. Like, so I'm, I'm in between Texas and Atlanta. Okay. By choice. Yeah, I'm in between Texas and Atlanta because I still have a pretty big uh, foundation or organization in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I'm back and forth a lot. Gotcha. Okay. So you just fly over once or drive over? Both. Drive, gotcha. drive and fly. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, drive and fly. I've got a, a couple of friends of mine. They they do that. They'll they'll drive to Texas every now and then for um like a holiday. Like they'll drive straight down and then turn around and go straight back. And I'm like, no. Nope. I've done like, that. I've <laughs> done like, some overnight. You know what's crazy? I've done an overnight trip to New York. Mm. Drove 26 hours to New York. I did. I had a presentation to do out there for yeah. three hours. Turned right around and came right back to Texas. Hey, you're a brave soul. Hours. You're a brave <laughs> soul. Did you do it by yourself or did you have somebody no, like? No, no, no. So uh, my husband, Dr. Pitts, went and my business partner, Shaniqua. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. so we went. 
Yeah, they okay. vowed to never drive to New York with me again. Like, <laughs> 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 <Is> that, <laughs> like that's it. We'll fly. <laughs> Got you. I I feel like I definitely feel like that just because for me personally, I've had um, like I the longest I've ever driven was from uh, like Louisiana to Illinois. Okay. And that was for like work where I had to, to leave one side and go to the next, like the next work assignment. And gotcha. it was originally supposed to be 14 hours, but it ended up taking uh, four more hours because I ended up in snow for the first time driving. And I just, just had to wait a little bit because it like snowed and then they had the uh, trucks come out and plow the road. So it just kind of took a while. And yeah. I kept, I kept refusing to pull over, which I was like, that's not smart. And <laughs> like, I'll, I'll make the original occasional trips every now and then maybe like four or six hours. But I'm just like, a lot of the right. trips that I've done, I've been by myself. And I'm, I'm just like, I, I'm really not built for that, like doing a 14 hour trip or like three, nine hour trips back to back. And I was like, that's just not smart. Like if I can yeah. save time or don't necessarily have to, then right. I'll do that. That makes sense. So you, so you were born in Atlanta, and then you, you went over to Houston to yes. to start the business, or start. No, actually, um, I moved to Houston. It wasn't. I, I was not an entrepreneur when I moved to Houston. Okay. Um, I just became an entrepreneur like three years ago. Right. Right. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Did you Did you move over there for work originally, or just relocating? just relocate like gotcha. i'm very okay. adventurous like i don't mind moving uh places okay yeah you just go places just to check it out just to say like let me try out this city or yeah i've been to uh i think i've been to every state in america and about 14 countries across the globe wow that's mm -hmm. amazing it was that like a quick turnaround or like over a period of time? Oh no, not to live. Yeah, not to stay. Just you know. Well, I mean, yeah, just like a week or uh, a week or a couple of days or something like that. Because I have it, you know, I have a nonprofit for single moms. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you recently start that or um, has that been been around for a minute? So it started because of my son. Okay. So as I was taking him to the rehab hospitals, it would be moms in there and they were distraught. Um, mm. Like they would be in there crying. And, you know, I just really like my whole approach to his situation was it's a phase, you know, what it was emotional, but it wasn't, it wasn't destructive. And so the mm. moms in there, it was destructive for them. Like they couldn't work. Yeah. They couldn't take care of the other kids. It was bad. And so mm -hmm. what I realized was they were looking for resources that they could not find. It wasn't that they were not there. Right. It was because when most people cannot find something on the surface, uh, by that point, they're not interested in going too deep to look for the information because then they just feel like it's not available. And so um, just like that, that single mom who went in the food stamp office, Mm -hmm. and she went to go get her and her kids approved for food stamps and they denied her right there on the spot and she took her kids her two little kids outside and she shot the kids first and then shot herself and it's like you know if she would have gone to a church or even if she would have looked it up yeah. there's food pantries there's grants for single moms there's there's so many different resources that are out there and that did not have to be the answer and so uh statistically a lot of single moms commit suicide a lot of them do take the kids with them because they don't want to leave them uh in a place where they feel like you know they won't be able to be cared for mm -hmm. and so it was it was in that process of taking my son back and forth uh, to the hospital, uh, to the rehab hospital, and he would be in there um, maybe like seven days, 21 days, 30 days, just mm -hmm. depending on how long they had to uh, detox him. And it, yeah. it was like, I would, I would meet these moms and they would just be like, they had no clue. So that's how uh, the single mom uh, project got started. And this year I actually received a global humanitarian award um, 
through Dr. Peterson, who uh, her program is enforced by President Barack Obama. So um, it, it's a, it's amazing for people to, I, I would say, take notice mm-hmm. because I wasn't doing it for that. You know, I really mm-hmm. was just doing it because <laughs> I was just like, man, like it's it's rough out here. Like these yeah. people need help. Right. And right. So uh, at at the single mom conferences, I would bring. I would bring other strategists, other moms that would come in and speak, whether they were speaking from a, um, a background of dealing with a child that had special needs or a mm-hmm. background of dealing with a child that had mental illness or uh, drug use or just, you know, just having to emerge. So I would, I, I always make sure that the women that are speaking to these mothers are providing strategies. So, and I think that's important because I don't want them to come in and leave the, leave, leave, I don't want them to come in and leave the same way. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So your, your organization, is it, it's focused on being that resource for the women or guiding them to the resources that they need? It's, it's a little bit of both. Okay. It's a little, it's a little bit of both. Um, because the, the resources are provided and they're also guided. So like, um, so typically like if we have a single mom that needs somewhere to live, Mm -hmm. uh, I had a young lady who was living in her, and this is crazy, Asher, but she was living in her car Mm -hmm. with her three kids and she was going to college and they were going to school and didn't miss a day. But they were wow. living in they were living in the car, mm-hmm. and so I was able to uh, uh, basically put her uh, at a church that actually had a uh, a shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, so that made sure that they always had a roof over their head and that they were fed, and those kids were able to you know at least to get a good night's sleep and not have to worry about somebody coming in, breaking in the car or stealing them or something like that. So it does both. We guide right. them and provide. That's amazing. So with, with getting the, um, the human, humanitarian recognition this year, has that kind of helped bring more resources your way? No. No. It just, has. <laughs> it kind of just gave you a pat. That's a good, no, look, that's, that's a, a great question. answer. Look, that's a good question. No, yeah. it hasn't. And, you, and you're right. It should have. Yeah. Because, I, I mean... It, that that's kind of the thing I, I wonder sometimes because it's like um a lot of people talk about participation trophies nowadays and like like you said, I don't know if I got the title right, but a lot of times I see that titles are a big thing for people and it's like, okay, I'm this person, I've got this thing, I'm with this, this and this, and it's like, okay, well, if the ends if the um what's the word? Like if, if all this the stuff doesn't get to an end goal or if it doesn't continue to kind of like build on what's already been established, then it's it's like it's it's giving just more lip service than anything. But I'm glad yeah. that even though that didn't do that, that's not dissuading you from doing what you're doing. Right. Because you were you were never looking for that in the first place. I wasn't. And, and, you know, it go, and then I think it goes back to um, speaking to your future, because mm-hmm. I used to always hashtag global ambassador, global humanitarian, Dr. Ashanti Odom. And so when all of that stuff started to actually manifest and take place, it was kind of like I was already I was already um, my behavior mm-hmm. was already there long before the title came, long before the recognition came, long before, uh, you know, the medal <laughs> came. My right. behavior was already there. So it was like the titles just had to catch up. Gotcha. So no, that that stuff doesn't, you know, that, that stuff doesn't bother me. But you're right. I would have thought um, that it, it, it would have brought uh, mm-hmm. more resources. But I mean, I'm cool with that because I, yeah. I think that um, it goes back to the reason why. And I think maybe that could be God's way of keeping me humble um, mm-hmm. and walking in humility because the reason why it started was because I was looking for help and mm-hmm. I couldn't find any because, and I couldn't find any because there's no, it's not on the surface. It's kind of like yeah. if you Google uh, help for drug addict teenage boys, like nothing comes up. Right. You have to like talk to people. You have to reach out to organizations. Mm-hmm. And so what I did was, Um, so on my, um, what I did was I provided a single mom resource list, Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And so that way they can actually go on my website and they can click on that and it'll be emailed to them immediately. But like if they need uh, free diapers, if they yeah. need uh, food, if they need their rent paid, if they need their light bill paid, um, if they need somewhere to live, if they need a grant just mm -hmm. for being a single mom, um, places like the Salvation Army will provide a thousand dollars for like a one-time emergency need fee. And yeah. so most single moms, they don't know stuff like that. Right. So they, they, they will get stuck. And honestly, like, I mean, it's single dads out there too. Mm -hmm. So like I've had single dads that go on there and they'll download, uh, download the information because it's, it's definitely not biased, but I saw right. a need for it. And that's how I got created. That's great. That, that's amazing. The, um, Hmm. I didn't mean to make it super serious, but I guess giving it a, a moment of pause is, is worthwhile because it's like that, like being able to, to not only meet a need, but make it a resource available to other people. It, it's, it's a great thing. And that's really what I'm hoping that this does either through um, marketing it correctly, which I'm sure I can learn a lot from you going into 2020 and just understanding how it is that you get the right people, the right information. Because a lot of times it seems like there's this, um, there's this barrier that, um, like you get a lot of junk food before you understand, oh, okay, like this is, like unless somebody told you correctly like what to eat, where to go, right. where to find the resource, like you, you don't know, like, your kids or your kids' kids aren't going to know what farming is or exactly. how, how you go and you say, well, <laughs> I was going to say how you go and make a sandwich, but hopefully it doesn't get that bad. It's like, <laughs> you, get, I hope not. you get two pieces of bread. <laughs> you got a problem, man. <laughs> right. It's like you get two pieces of bread and you put some peanut butter or you put some jam right. on it or you put right. some butter or like whatever it is, but just like those basic things. And it's like, even if you didn't know to go to the store and do this, like, um, being able to even know how to cook like some people say okay you shouldn't like you shouldn't be burning water but like if you're gonna boil water like watch it you can boil some eggs you start there hey like baking is another form of quote-unquote cooking but like if you know how to like get the raw ingredients and make what you need to make to be able to feed you that that's yeah. a good thing to know. And it's, yeah. I'm not, I'm not telling people, okay, we're going into the, into the stone ages. You got to go over there, go find the chicken right. and like bring it in, pluck it, chop it up and all that. Like, those are things that I saw <laughs> growing up that's, that are important. And I, I understand right. it, but it's like the world's evolving. People need to evolve. But as we're evolving, like it, it makes sense to get more people out from the bottom and not um, I heard Dr. Claude Anderson say it on a um, on an interview the other day. He was saying that making a goal, like saying that we need to um, change poverty or get rid of poverty, it's like that's that's kind of like a fool's goal. The best thing that right. you can do is get people out of poverty or get people away from like the bad situation, so to say, or show them how to get get out of it because exactly. um the sad thing is that poverty's always going to be a thing mm -hmm. and regardless of whether we want it to be or not it's just it's a part of life unfortunately yep yep that's absolutely right i'm trying to uh before i forget update this post real quick i found <laughs> I found this, um, I was talking with, with my friend and um, I don't know if you ever played, have you ever played video games? Yeah, absolutely. You okay. So um, back in the day, there was this, uh, there's this Xbox commercial and this, uh, this older man, <laughs> he's uh, sitting on a couch and he's telling this story and he's just like, everybody's doing it. Guys are doing it with guys or guys are doing it with girls girls are doing it with other girls 
<laughs> and it's like you're sitting here like what is this dirty old man talking about right and it's like he's he's talking about everybody's playing xbox live modern warfare that's and that's funny. that's what they're doing that's funny but it's just it's just hilarious <laughs> and i the reason it, it popped into my mind is because i was talking with my friend about the messiness about the messiness of um like being in in our construction work environment where it's like everybody's about everybody's business and yeah. like nobody seems to mind their own business they just want to know like okay what's this person doing what are they into and yep. a lot of times it's like you you do best to keep a low profile and yeah. just like keep your head down be about your business get in get out go home and just take care of what's important to you otherwise you you get overwhelmed from um, all the mess that other people are into. Yep. But my, just my alert, I'm sorry, my alert went off earlier and it reminded me of that. And then that's, that's the video that I decided I was going to pick to uh, put up in my stories and, oh, wow. and, and try to relate it just to, just to think about it differently i'm just like okay right. let me let me see if i can be creative with this thing and uh right. you saw see, the one i put up about credit right no i haven't seen it yet yeah like, there was a uh, jaheen it's like when you when you got bad credit you're gonna end up looking like jaheen <laughs> oh i did see that i did see that. i didn't get i just saw the picture like i'm not up on all the memes and everything and i was like ooh, that, that that's a bad look that's a hey that's a bad look yeah and it i guess i i can't well how do i want to say this i was gonna say i can't say too much or i don't i don't want to act like oh i'm i'm so much better because i i've seen uh you probably can't tell looking at it but like i can tell that my hairline is is thinning and uh as I as I've started to notice it, I was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna try to play like, oh, it's not going. It's like you can you can kind of see it, but the uh, I've got the hat on because the last barber kind of messed me up a little bit. My hairline went from like here to to here, <laughs> so I took a picture of it, didn't notice it, and then put it up uh, on like within a group chat. Nobody said anything, and then I looked back at it. I looked in the mirror, and I was like something doesn't look right like that right that was that wasn't what it looked like before <laughs> but anyways i guess that's that's a uh a sidebar but i got um but you know it's nothing wrong with the enhancements what do you mean um you know like they have the male enhancements like the man weave uh, Mm-hmm. The man weave, the so sprays. You, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be opposed to seeing your man wearing a man weave. Like No. That wouldn't like, bother you. You you it shouldn't. Like when you think okay, so think about this. Uh -huh. When you think about women and we get our nails done and we get our hair done and uh, yeah. lashes and so it's like it's the same thing. It's it's an it's enhancement. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, honestly, um, because that would be kind of like you dating someone and they don't try to make sure that they look, you know, good for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the man weave. It can be, uh, I think they call it the Beijing that lasts for like two weeks or a week or whatever, however long, but it corrects whatever the barber messes up and it looks good so i mean it's the same thing because you think about like men get fake chest muscles put in fake arm muscles put in like like it's not you're not going to that type of extreme but i don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with enhancements at all period hey okay you, you heard it here first so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just gonna leave that one alone <laughs> It's the truth. There's well, nothing, nothing wrong for all the men listening. And your <laughs> hairline may not be where it needs to be. I'm telling you, do not feel bad if you have to go get it enhanced. There's nothing wrong with that. That's sexy. I feel like if you've got to, sometimes like you, you've got to like 
accept some things like women can do certain things and it's okay but like i think for for guys it's like okay one you we already you already don't we already don't wear makeup so it's like our face is the way it is like if it doesn't work out like a guy's really got to have his personality together otherwise it's like hey like somebody must really really like you otherwise right. but but now it's like if it goes to the hair hey I'm, but to your point if it works for them cool but then if you're looking like jaim like you were saying earlier it's like oh he needed he needs enhancement all day long he needs <laughs> but i mean sometimes it's like there's nothing wrong with just going bald and just being like hey just mm. rock a hat or whatever whatever your preference is yeah, whatever there's, your preference there's, there's is. There's something but, out but there I'm for saying, everybody. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad and don't let anybody else make you <laughs> feel bad. Don't let that happen. Because right. I'm, I'm telling you, like, you would be surprised. Like one of the one of the guys that I mentor, mm -hmm. uh, he was bald for I don't know, years maybe. And then he was like, I just let my hair grow. And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it looks so good. And people really think that it's his hair like nobody would even know wait, and it look wait. it looks good on him so what you said he was bald for years and then he let his hair grow but then got he got the enhanced oh, okay he quote unquote let it grow so he just put on a toupee one day and nobody was like you didn't used to have hair for like the last five years all of a sudden you got hair like no nobody noticed or nobody noticed and that's but see that's what i'm telling you like <laughs> if you if you think about today's society like just yeah. think about that Deion sanders used to always say what if you if you look good you if, feel good yeah and if you feel good like you can sell good or whatever yeah, um, yeah. and so it's kind of like when you think about that um people's perceptions uh they have an impact Mm -hmm. on individuals so mm -hmm. you may be like i need to rock a hat yeah so nobody says anything but you can just enhance it mm -hmm. and then it all of a sudden it puts your posture in such a, a way of authority that way when you walk in a room you like yeah i'm only <laughs> right because they don't know they don't until know some, until somebody walks up on you and just like accidentally they can't even see you. it See, no, you I'm just need to try it. Just try it one day. No, I'm it. good. I guess I, I'm rocking the hat because I like the hat. Like this one was uh it's from like uh a rap artist that I follow, Logic. And I okay. I just I like like his music and whatnot. And for some reason or another, I think it's probably right around the time I started following E and I was like, hey, you know what? I, I want to wear a hat too. And I was okay. like, I mainly just wore it to keep the sun out of my face. And like, I just, that's, I think that's what hats were made for initially. So I, I try to use it for the purpose it was intended. But then gotcha. as it's, as I started to notice that the hair is kind of going a little bit, I was like, okay, like if it goes, it goes. If the grays come in, they come in, but I'm like, I'm not going to try and hide and be like, oh no, like I'm like I, that. That's never been me, so maybe I might sound bashful, but that is just, <laughs> there's been some things, some pictures I've looked, and I'm like, no, like, some, I mean, if, if you can pull it off, though, like, that, to each his own. That's true, too. <laughs> to to each, it's definitely own. to each his own. But, you know, one day, your podcast is going to blow up so, so big, yeah. and people are going to be like, and then, see, then you're going to be like, you know what? Nope. I know I said I probably would never do it. Let's just see what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll fall in love. Like one of my one of my good friends, he's 23 and he does it. Mm. And he's a he's a multimillionaire. So he that's said why he's I said 23 that. and he's having to do it. Yeah. Well that well, if he's a multimillionaire, that's probably a good reason why his hair might be going. Yeah. Yeah. So don't don't let the people make you feel bad. No. Not oh, you, no, no, no. not you. To those, to those that are listening, to right, those that right. are watching and listening. <laughs> not you, though, Ashley. You know, I know you got this. <laughs> I, I think I, I, com I completely lost my train of thought. I got distracted from the uh, <laughs> making sure that the thing uploaded, but it was. Um, I'll have to figure it out at another time to see how you're supposed to stream it without having to be like on the stream. But gotcha. um, we were talking about the nonprofit that you've started. Um, how long ago was that that you started? I started it? it. It's only a year. 
A year old? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a year old. Nice. And uh, I know I I spoke with your husband earlier this year, and it seems like I just, I think I added him on Facebook, and I just started noticing that he was just doing, like, these posts every single day almost, just, like, putting out things. And I, I clicked on one, and I was like, okay, wow, this is cool. And then he told me about how... Um, you guys got married and how you met each other and then eventually got married and I was like wow you guys seem like just a power couple out here like (laughs) not not like necessarily um what do they call it posturing but like you're um you're living your best life and you're you're doing it intentionally not necessarily to be seen but like you're you're just you're just being yourselves and i was like right. that's that's something beautiful to see and that's something that i appreciate about like breathe university and a lot of people that i've met through there because like not every single person but like the majority of people that i've met they have good intentions and like their follow through with it is very genuine. So I, I appreciate yeah. that about you and your husband. And um, that. you're welcome. But I was gonna, oh, the reason that I, I brought him up, I was gonna say like, are you guys in a race to like, have the most companies in the world or just like impact a great number of people? We compete. We, gotcha. compete, we compete hard. Like, we've only been married for two years, but in mm-hmm. those two years, we compete hard. Like, I surprised him in Hawaii with a, uh, with a surprise wedding, vow renewal. Mm. And so, so that was your thought, idea. Yes. And the crazy part was he thought he was going to an all-white photo shoot. Mm-hmm. So that's why he had, that's why he had <laughs> on all white. But I did it on the day of our wedding anniversary, but mm. I was doing it for his birthday because originally I was planning on doing that for his birthday, but we had to end up uh, doing some other uh, stuff, traveling mm. and stuff. So yeah. I didn't get a chance to do it, but I was just like, man, I was like, I said, this year I'm going to plan a surprise wedding. I'm like, there's no way he can beat that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he couldn't, of course. But then you, you <laughs> see, he turned around, and then he surprised me with a car. So, oh snap! Yeah, so like we we stay in competition mode all the time. So, like he, uh, you know, he he's planning for my birthday for next year right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we we stay we definitely stay competing, and I think it's I think that's a good thing. I think that's healthy. Yeah. Um, because you don't want to. I don't think. I think what it does is. You know how, like, when you're in the environment with other creatives mm-hmm. and it manifests more creativity, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, you can be sitting in the room full of, like, business people or people that are, uh, they're creators, period. Mm-hmm. And so when you're sitting in the room with them, it's almost like there's, like, an ignite switch that goes off on the inside of you that's like, you know what? I never thought about it like that. Let me try this approach. Yeah. Or I never thought about accomplishing that. Let me set that goal. And so I think that um, our competition, uh, for some people, they might be like, it's a bit much. Like you're at surprise <laughs> weddings and buying surprise cars and all this other kind of stuff that we do. Yeah. But when you think about it, it is like uh, the Bible talks about that um, iron sharpens iron. And so if we're always in a place of never being stagnant, then it keeps us in a place of where we're always steady, elevated, always steady, maturing, always steady, growing. Um, And so I believe that having that competition is definitely uh, healthy. And so I'll tell him like when he get because he just got. Uh, a new booking agent. I'm like, man, I'm mm-hmm. gonna call her and see if I can offer her more, mm-hmm. so she can come. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to steal his me. booking agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's good. I mean, she is good. Yeah. And he's like, wait a minute. What about um? What about so and so? You know, she would make a good. I'll even train her for you, <laughs> so that way you don't have to take mine. And I'm like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, the coins talk. So yeah, we stay, we definitely stay in, in competition mode, but it's a, it's a good thing. Nice. I like it's that. It's a good thing. This is the It's My Time Podcast with Asher Chua.